Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Thanks for listening. Going on my very first yoga retreat seven years ago was a major turning point in my life, so much so that now I get to lead these amazing yoga adventures all over the world. These are truly transformative experiences, and I believe that anyone who enjoys a lifestyle of health and wellness can greatly benefit from a yoga retreat. So this February, I'm taking a very special group with me on a yoga and meditation retreat to Thailand. The retreat is called Love, Gratitude, and Freedom, The retreat is about designing a roadmap to connect to love in your life. We will use different yogic modalities to connect with our sense of purpose, gratitude, and achieve more freedom in our lives. Everyone knows how during our daily lives we get totally bombarded and totally overwhelmed and it's really nice to be able to get away and go somewhere with like-minded individuals, eat really delicious food, and be able to just immerse ourselves in practice. You'll take your yoga to the next level, you'll get a new perspective, you'll be able to have a digital detox, you'll be able to relax and de-stress and maybe learn something new. If you're interested, go to www.radicallyloved.com forward slash events, read all about the retreats there, or you can email me, rosie at radicallyloved.com for more information. Alexandria Crow's yoga experience has been about transformation. The physical challenges of yoga provided a natural familiarity for the former competitive gymnast, while the philosophy of yoga has given her tools she uses to approach life with a fearless attitude. And she is fearless. It was during her first teacher training that Alex realized the connection between the physical practice of yoga and the spiritual texts she had been studying. She learned the importance of living in the present and how one's thoughts do not reflect one's true self. This lesson and her continued yoga practice transformed her life. I cannot wait to share this with you. She is an incredible teacher and somebody that I really look up to, and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this week's podcast. One of the biggest things I find in the yoga world especially is like this idea of perfectionism. You know, in Mm -hmm. the way of how you project yourself out into the world or how you're seen, you know, because we are yogis, you know, so it's like there's this Mm -hmm. underlying unspoken standard that we have to like (laughs) always be happy and always be like, you know, namaste and just being like totally calm. And I'm like, that's not how it is. (laughs) No, that is not how it is. I find it. So uh, it's so fascinating that, you know, with the advent of social media, and I guess even before that, um, it would have been the case just in the sense of, you know, you were seen by your students in a certain light. Um, But I think with the kind of popularization and this massive explosion of yoga that, you know, I've witnessed as you have over the last, you know, I'd say like five years or something like Mm -hmm. that, it's it's interesting that it's turned into kind of what it has in the sense that it's almost as if you have to curate your life in this uh, way that isn't even necessarily yoga or nor does it, I mean, how could you represent that you're present momently like connected over social media or even in person? How could you, you have no idea unless you're the person that's assessing that for yourself. So I find it really funny that it's like this thing that you kind of wander around with this curated image of self, either in person or online. And and yet underneath that, in the teaching of yoga and in the tenets of it philosophically, there's this demand for truthfulness and in the way that's just completely 
blunt about what it what is seen, what is, um, and, and it's this brutal, almost honesty about like, no, it's like this, this is how it is. Let's, let's be real about it. And, and yet there's this trend of kind of almost like hippifying yourself, like in the hippie sort of way, rather than in this yoga sort of way, which can be way, way blunt and kind of like to the point and cutting because it is so honest when you're looking at things in reality. Um, but I, I find it a weird juxtaposition that's happened currently for sure. I'm sure it always has, but it's just so much more prevalent right now. Is it? And so why, why, why do you think that is? Is it just because social media is such a prevalent thing now? Mm, I, not necessarily just that. You know, one of the big things that I wander around doing these days, and one of the reasons that I speak like that on, on social media, and, you know, I'm, I'm just blunt. I'm not um, cutting in a way that it's, you know, negative or right. down with this or sad. Um, I'm very, very hopeful about what could be possible and what is going on and how there's tremendous opportunity for growth. And it's not as narrow as you would perceive from some angles right now. Um, but I think one of the major things that I've been trying to get across and one of my, my focuses is the educational system and, you know, the whole 200, 500 hour yoga line oh, certified yeah. dot, 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 uh-huh. um, <laughs> that, that is a pretty lackluster system if you're going to, you know, go from a studio class taking model to uh, who knows how long you've been practicing, you know, you could say it matters, you could say it doesn't, but uh, then take this 200 hour and, you know, some people that's just where they stop because they're kind of taught just this basic framework that makes it seem like, well, that's, you know, it, I know how to say the thing for the poses and I know how to teach the sequence I was offered. And so I'm doing it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that this kind of explosion of yoga and its popularity and then the way that it's passed down these days is kind of leaving big holes in people's understanding and, you know, to me, it's really sad. We came up through a similar system, different teachers within mm-hmm. it, but similar um, system of training. And then I had the luxury of going and working with my teacher long term. And so I had a depth of continual education and understanding that's, that is the norm for a certain generation of yeah. teacher, but also really missing these days. And so I think that, you know, I've, I feel really lucky that I'm so close in lineage to kind of the, the start of it uh, in a modern sense. And then I was forced into this deep level of understanding and um, of learning. And I see now, you know, when I go out, that there's a lack of that. And so the classes are taught in a way that, that leaves them full of holes. And then the trainings are taught in that way. Um, and I oftentimes... Uh, tell this story about uh, my boyfriend's four-year-old who doesn't like mayonnaise, but uh, Zach and his older brother do, and they were dipping fries in mayonnaise, and there was no ketchup, and the four-year-old was having, like, a meltdown about it, and uh, and the eight-year-old said to him, it's, this is ketchup, it's white ketchup, and so the four-year-old tried it and <laughs> loved it. And was like, oh, my God, so good. And now he calls it white ketchup. (laughs) And he doesn't know, he doesn't have the framework to understand that that's not even remotely ketchup. It doesn't have any of the same ingredients at all. Um, But that's his framework for it. It, You know, it's like he was told that's what it is. And so here it is. And now mayonnaise is ketchup to him. And it's kind of a funny metaphor, but it's true. If you, if you don't, you don't know what you don't know until you find out. And so I think that that's so much of it is that you curate what has been told um, to you as the thing, like, this is what yoga teachers do. This is how they live. And then when the, the psychology of the group says that's what it is, then you just do that. Unless you know that that's, unless you've tasted real ketchup, you know, and then you're like, wait, this is a little off kilter here. Let's, let's talk about this. So I think it's a combination of social media, educational system, uh, popularization really quickly, um, all working together. And I, again, I think it's a tremendous place for growth, not an opportunity, um, not a place where I'm thinking or feeling like 
it's all ruined. Let's just forget it all. It's yeah. awful. You just suck. It's not like that. It's like, no, 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 guys, come on. Let's wake up. Let's open our eyes. There's more teachers than there are new students. There's, uh, you know, studios that have been around for a long time that are closing their doors yeah. because there's big chain studios coming in and offering fitness yoga classes. And, you know, that is that is putting the older studios um, out of business oftentimes. And like, let's talk about this. Let's Let's do something about it as a collective. Right. And so do you think that the framework that is currently being offered is geared more towards pleasing students' desires rather than something deeper? Oh, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so far, that's, that's, it's really difficult. I mean, I know you mentored with Kia, um, and uh, so, and I know Kia and respect Kia a, a lot, mm-hmm. and, um, and I, I know that I mentored with somebody who, you know, James was very much about teach the topic, teach what needs to be taught. Don't, you know, it's not about what is going to fill the class quickly. And even Mati, his teacher, who's my teacher by proxy in a lot of ways, um, same thing. Like, do you want to be popular or do you want to be a good teacher? Because there's a difference. And yes, popularity can happen via teaching great stuff, but it's slow. It's a slow build. And so I think you know, because it's now about the bottom line yeah. and not about what needs to be taught. It's, you know, what is going to get people in the door, what's going to keep them coming back. But again, I think that that's a place for growth because I think oftentimes we as yoga teachers and within the community at large, um, and even in the corporate sense, the, the business runners, they, they only know this is what seems to have worked. But they've never tried offering anything else in a real way, in a like full, like we're going to do this in a new way um, sort of sense. Like we're going to offer an entire studio's worth of something different. And um, I think that there is a huge amount of potential there. I just don't think it's tapped into because it's safe to do the fast, sweaty, you know, great playlist, move a lot. Uh, you know, make sure you get the sun A's and sun B's in there and Urba, Pigeon, Shavasana, you're good. 45 minutes, get it all in. <laughs> I think I, I think that that's like safe at this yeah. point, but it's also not working. Right. It's not working. So, you know, at a certain point, you've got to do the yoga and say, hey, I know this isn't working. I'm paying attention. This is not functioning the way it needs to. Let's take wise action and go forward and do, try something else and be willing to take that risk and to actually put into practice that which we are supposed to be living and teaching ourselves. So how do you think we can begin to bring that into the current framework? I think one thing is just understanding that, like looking really rationally, like What do you think about the 200 and 500 hour model as like, go check that off the box, check that off the box. Is that enough? Like, is that going to work necessarily for, for uh, the long term? Like I would assume you'll say no in some capacity. That's correct. Um, uh, it, and so it's kind of to look at that really honestly and say, okay, that's not working. Well, let's look at what has worked or what could work out there in other educational systems well if you you know look at becoming a psychiatrist let's say um which you know in in terms of responsibility oftentimes i feel as responsible as that profession or as a doctor Mm -hmm. even though i'm not those things and even though i am not trying to fix people's minds or bodies directly like by my hand and giving them advice like that that's not at all how i work the result can be really powerful and so it is a huge responsibility So I think looking at something like, you know, psychiatry or becoming a doctor, well, you go and do your undergrad and then you have to do a huge amount of school after that. And then even when you're done with that, they don't just turn you loose with a scalpel or with like a (laughs) certificate on your wall and say, just go work with people's minds and bodies. You have to apprentice and and do all of this interning work and be observed and give feedback and you've got to pass state boards and like all of those sorts of things which I know is oftentimes like not a very popular topic right now. And I can yeah. understand why, because that's scary to people like, oh my God, we're going to be regulated and we're going to have to do all that. Well, if the topic is as important to you as everybody says it is, and if it has the power to change, like we tell 
people's lives and, and ways of understanding, like we tell people it is, then it's a big enough responsibility to not be afraid of having to do that kind of work. So I think it's going to take kind of looking at that really honestly and say, this is something that needs to change long term and in a bigger way, which is, you know, why I'm trying to offer solutions for that continuing education solutions that aren't about fancy tricks necessarily that aren't about like the new hip thing. They're about no understand the information like from an intellectual standpoint, sit here and understand the information, then figure out how to apply it, then apply it in your own way. But um, I think I think that that's a place to start, at least, is to say this is going to need to be a different type of educational system with teacher-student mentoring uh, that's long-term and with, with some sort of kind of standard uh, of skill and, and knowledge base. So, you know, that's a start. Yeah. I mean, Alex, you've been practicing for a long time. You've been teaching for a long time. How Mm -hmm. has your training and your practice evolved over the years? And what has happened in your career to be able to pull back and look at the bigger picture of of what's happening in in the grand scope? Well, one of of the things that... um, I mean, here, this way of seeing things, I would say, like, yoga is a way of, of seeing life um, and, you know, the practice of it, at least. That is, it's self-study practice that's constantly directing you towards what is in any given moment. And so it's a, it's a conscious state and that, that you're trying to navigate through. And... Um, that's something that I try to live like all the time. So it requires me to do a lot of self-study and a lot of looking at things. And, you know, I had practiced for a long time and I had done, you know, vinyasa and then I was heavily involved in Ashtanga for a while and I got really hurt and I talk about it quite often and I don't talk about it to scare people. I talk about it because it's what happens and it's what happened and it's what's happening on a big level. And it's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to hurt you like that. It's supposed to help you not hurt yourself, not uh, make it worse. So I think when I injured myself and saw um, what I had done and what I had bought into and why and really inspected that and, you know, I've done a lot of therapy and a lot of personal work and all that, it, it allowed me to step back and say, okay, what, what happened there? Why did that happen? Mm-hmm. What okay, now what am I doing as a teacher? How am I perpetuating the same things for my own students by accident? And I was always a much better teacher than I was practitioner. I'm, I'm safer with my students than I ever am with myself, which is kind of funny. But um, I think it demanded that I pull back. And part of my personality and part of who I, I am as I'm built is that I weigh everything constantly. Like most of my chart is Libra like, it's not my, <laughs> my, like, it's sign, but like I'm constantly like this hypocrite awareness person where I'm like well it's this and that and this and I'm balancing it back and forth all the time so I became really aware of what I was teaching in the classroom being incongruent with what I believed as a as a practitioner at that stage which was like I was still teaching some pretty complex fancy poses that were composed in a way that was biomechanically like unsound and I was still offering them I was doing it better I was doing it way better and then I was still like making myself do some of them for some of the work stuff um, that I was doing at the time and Actually, my, my boyfriend was the one that said, what are you doing? Like, why are you still doing that? You know too much to be doing what you're doing. And it was a moment where I was like, I need to change this. I have to, to bring the way I teach and the, the way that I handle myself into this congruent pattern. So I had to kind of drop the vinyasa model in a lot of ways. And I broke it down slowly and dropped things out and changed them and altered the way I was doing it slowly. But one of the major things I was realizing was that the poses that were put together for this different body type in a completely different culture. We're not working to serve a yoga practice here in our culture. They were actually doing the opposite. And so it was, you know, you can, you can say, Oh, well, we can teach with, you know, alignment or whatever and hope to do better. But at a certain point you have to be pretty honest and say like, some of this stuff just isn't meant for us. It's not working and it's hurting people more than it's helping. So maybe we should find a better model. And that was all I tried to do was to say, okay, that classic pose 
doesn't make sense for these people. How can I figure out physically how I could give them the same result, even though that's not really the point? How could I give them kind of the perceived same physical result while doing it in a way that was more tailored to their Western physicality and lifestyle? And oftentimes coming to yoga very late, you know, in the game and, mm-hmm. and not being a 14-year-old um, Indian boy coming yeah. to it. Instead, <laughs> being like a 35-year-old, you know, or 45-year-old or 60-year-old uh, person who sat in an office chair for a long time and, and driven cars and lived a high-stress life. So that was, it, it was that moment where I was like, I either am going to feel like a fraud and Mm. continuing to do it the way that I'm doing it, or I'm going to have to adjust this and make it feel real and honest. Um, And it kind of goes back to your first question of of this kind of curated way of being. And I was like, I can't, I can't curate that and pretend anymore. I need to be honest about what I know and what I see and where I'm I'm at with all this and meet my students where they're at and hopefully just turn the lights on a little brighter and say like, there are a lot of options that maybe you haven't seen and there's a lot of different ways you can work with this that maybe you haven't seen. Maybe try those because you're all really hurt um, around the country and world at this point. Yeah. And there's, there's a way not to do that. Yeah. So what, for the people that don't know about how you got injured, do you want to just tell us really quickly how that happened? Sure. Um, it's a pretty common set of injuries out there at this point, actually. Um, I'm sure you've just seen a huge chunk of them as well. But, uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> like, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, like, not to like off track here, but you know, I teach injury pre- an injury prevention workshop at Yoga Journal um, at all their conferences. It's part of it, it's a public offering, but it's part of like the mentorship thing that I do um, with Giselle and Coral there, and it's it's an incredibly well attended class, and that to me is like great and sad all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. That and um, 99% of it is uh, uh, the population of students in there are teachers and they're all hurt, like every one of them. And so, you know, there's a huge amount of injury going on out there. Um, I did it because I was a gymnast for a long time. So I have tremendous flexibility. I'm a hypermobile person by nature. Um, but I was really strong as a gymnast. I did not get it hurt really doing that at all. And I did it for a very long time. And I got, I had some shin splints and like some tendonitis in my wrist, but nothing that was like life shattering in any capacity. Um, but I was really strong and stable and flexible. And when I started doing asana, it was a vinyasa style. It was way before it was fast and fancy. So that was always fine. And I did, you know, that was, without any harm um but then i started doing ashtanga which the primary series and on from that and especially the primary series is upper body strengthening and like a huge amount of upper body strength which i already had so that was fine and came very easily but it was lower body flexibility um and lack of strength and honestly just pushing into flexibility Mm -hmm. which in terms of musculature and tendon and ligament i have but I also don't have the skeletal range for a lot of those shapes. Um, foot behind the head, uh, turning my leg externally like that. I don't have a lot of hip rotation. I'm built like a gymnast, and they're not built that way. They're built like just, I mean, the Olympics were just on, so it's great. Like, they're uh-huh. just, like, they're, like brick shit houses, just like this, like, <laughs> compact little, like, and that was how I was kind of built. And then I stretched my hips all out, destabilized them, and destabilized my SI region. And I didn't realize that that sensation back there was not what was supposed to be happening. I thought it was, oh, just, you know, it's sold to you. It's just stuff shifting around. That, that stuff, you know, working itself out, whatever. It was in my mind, this concept that that's just something shifting. Well, your SI joint's not supposed to shift. It's certainly not supposed to shift in rotation like let's be real here so um so I tore that apart and then ended up um I had some underlying like nervous system uh, sympathetic like triggers going on that left my spine not as mobile as it would seem visibly um so I crushed like L5 L4 L3 um and then torqued T12 and put an S curve in my neck from putting my foot behind my head and pushing my head back into it. And then the last one was I, I 
tore a little bit of my labrum and my right hip. Um, and that was just running, but it was actually, I was still doing stuff. Um, asana that was not wise for me. Um, and it was just that my thigh bone was sitting in the socket in a weird way. So I was all tight and everything was all pulling. So I did a lot of stuff. I injured the heck out of myself, but it was just because I thought that was what you were supposed to be doing. Mm. I thought those were the shapes that you did and yeah. they were sold to me as safe, you know, yoga sold as healing these days. And so how could something that's healing hurt you? How could it injure you like in a devastating way? And, you know, I couldn't walk for a while and it happened three times. Like I'm pretty stubborn. So, um, I did a lot before I was like, okay, maybe this is not working. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. What is yoga physics doing in the scope of, of yoga and what's your intention behind it? Totally. Um, so the, the way that I practice and teach has changed in the sense that I no longer, for the most part, teach, um, I, I'll teach like certain postures that are still quote unquote fancy, but th I've decided for the most part that they're mechanically sound, um, at least in their approach. Um, I teach in a way that's much more drill based than, and I don't mean like drill sergeant. I just mean repetitive, like understanding of how joints move on their own and how they move in conjunction with other joints. So it's, um, it's something that I, I will build towards, much like we were trained, you know, build towards a quote unquote peak, but it's in a much gentler, much simpler way with really the final peak pose being maybe the only quote unquote classic shape mm -hmm. or, or perceivably what you would think of as asana these days, um, shape in class. The rest of it is oftentimes just like moving a leg up and down and moving a leg up and down and bending your knee and straightening it and figuring out how those work together. But it's kind of um, more of a, you know, inquisitive uh, way of working with people. And it's meant to say, you know, I, I think of classes much differently these days. And this is, you know, part of what yoga physics and kind of my way of seeing things is um, I don't think of my class anymore as a place where I have a sequence because that's ridiculous you, you can you imagine being a, a chemistry teacher that had a sequence for their chemistry <laughs> lecture that like it's weird it's a weird yeah, totally. concept <laughs> so I think of myself and I always it was something that James said early on in in working with me it, he, he said I don't like being called an instructor I like being called a teacher um and I um, he was a teacher prior to that in in different mode. So I, I understood and resonated with that. I was like, yes, I agree. I'm a teacher as well. I want to teach people how and why and what. Um, and so with that, you know, for a long time, I taught sequencing and I thought of class and sequence, but then I was like, wait a second, this isn't working. People don't understand why poses are in class or what they're supposed to be doing with them and they're getting hurt. So how would I have a topic that I'm going to cover that day? I'm a yoga teacher, which I, I think is pretty funny. I'm like, well, really, I'm just like a pay attention teacher. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's the concept of saying, okay, today's, today's topic is going to be, and it can take something kind of simple like Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Well, I wouldn't think of it as a sequence towards Uttanasana. I would think Uttanasana is a posture that has X, Y, Z uh, anatomical position changes. And this is how the hip flexes. This is how the hip flexes in coordination with the spine uh, flexing at a certain point. Uh, it may then below that require people to adjust that posture to fit their specific needs. It's going to require them to understand that these muscles need to work and these ones must let go. And if these ones aren't strong enough to, to get those ones to let go, then there's going to be modifications that have to happen. And I need to teach you all of that so that you understand Uttanasana as the topic of the day and make great decisions around it. So I think of class kind of like that rather than thinking of it as like this sequence. And I'm also taking into account that people show up in fight or flight most of the time. They're like freaked out all day, every day. Yeah. And my job is to get them to calm down and to pay attention, to be present with what they're doing and to be aware of the sensation of what they're doing and, and the 
the thoughts that arise from that and all those sorts of things so they can be really wise with what they're doing. But I can't do that if I'm just flowing them through a sequence. That's not going to work. So um, one of the things that, you know, <laughs> the reason that I have this brand is actually kind of funny. It's, uh, I, my friend and I created it together, but it's more because I was never really comfortable with my name being the thing that I was out there with. I don't really <laughs> like being out there. So I was like, maybe if I could just not use my name, that'd be nice one day to just have this thing. But I don't, I don't certify people. I don't have certificates for yoga physics. I don't, I don't do any of that. It's, it's, um, really a, a brand that does have a way of, I, I have a way of presenting things, but it was meant kind of as this, um, just not having to use Alex Crow all the time. But uh, the, the whole thing that's really funny is one of my students said that I, taking my class is like doing long division. She was like, you know, we're working through every step and by the end I have the answer, but it's like, man, it's a long division problem to get to the end. And I was like, I know. And then other people have said, um, you you really show your math when you're doing this and when you I teach teachers oftentimes they'll be like oh my god you are asking us to show our math like everywhere not just the answer but you're just asking us to show like all the calculations to get there and I'm like well yeah that's that's my job is to to get you to know why you're doing what you're doing and as a teacher I think you should be able to show your math about what and why and it, it yeah sure it's intuitive but it's also got a reason right and so um I thought yoga you know, physics was funny one because it's kind of that equation type of thing but then also mm-hmm. it's energy into into matter right <laughs> which means that I can make it whatever I want at any given time <laughs> exactly so, um, exactly so it's something like kind of morphable but um the whole idea behind it is is really to be able to when I'm teaching people how to teach or, or how to practice yoga or how to understand it, really I'm teaching the topic in no esoteric sort of way. And it's not usually via like, let's do a 90 minute practice and then talk about it. It's like, no, 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 this is school. Let's, let's listen and learn the topic from the inside out. Let's understand all the whys and the reasoning behind all of this stuff so that when you know that, when you really understand the topic from a like, yeah, this this is a topic I could write an essay on and have real reasons for, then you can teach it in a way that's very authentic to you as an individual, which means you can format a class in a way that makes sense to you that I wouldn't necessarily do, um, but it works for your student base. And you can use words that work for your topic rather than thinking of cueing because chemistry teachers don't have cues. Chemistry teachers uh-huh. explain the topic, but that requires you to understand what the topic is from a really deep level. And so um, that's what I aim to do is not teach anatomy just to teach anatomy. It's teach anatomy and biomechanics and then use that information applied upon the individual's body as it relates to us in the shape. Okay, right. now we are getting somewhere. Um, you know, like then I feel like I can get people to teach in a way that's really wise for their student base or for themselves or to practice in a way that's really wise for themselves that's kind of the the reason behind it is all the whys in right the world. yeah and so in essence there's no shortcut to enlightenment is what you're saying absolutely yeah <laughs> good that's perfect way to summate it it's perfect Rosie. no there's not <laughs> Unless you're like one of those people that's like, you know, I don't even know, born that way. Born that way, yeah. Yeah, happen to be enlightened already. Well, so, and and part of another, you know, one of the things I actually want to ask you about, you mentioned James a couple of times, and you know, I've been studying mm-hmm. with uh, Yoga Rupa Rod Stryker for the last five years, and, mm-hmm. and we study para-yoga, which... Uh, blends the ancient teachings of Tantra, Hatha Yoga, Ayurveda, and, and the Yoga Sutras, right? And so we really study yep. the importance of studying with the teacher and lineage, mm-hmm. right? So, yes. and and you you spoke about you spoke to this earlier uh, when you were talking about like a mentor, being a mentor and being a teacher, and you mm-hmm. studying with your teacher. So, can you tell me why for you it's important to be able to have the connection to that lineage? And why it's important to to not lose that in what is happening in the popularization of yoga today. Totally. I mean, I love that that's like where you're coming from at this moment, because um, I hope that this like resonates with you is that what I feel like is lost out there these days are the threads that take this back to what it was 
um, originally intended for. I was having a conversation actually this morning when I was in the shower with, with Zach and I was saying, at what point, at what point, you know, there's always this conversation about, well, culture meets topic and morphs it. Okay, fair enough. Um, which, you know, I'll, I'll come back to in a moment, but at what point does the topic and the cultural morphing move said topic to a place where it's no longer the original topic mm. and, and it's no longer serving the same purpose or even coming from the same place? And I feel like so much of what's being offered these days, sadly, and, and you know, it's just a state of affairs, not criticism of any one person or any one school. It's the way it is right now, which is, you know, worth looking at with a critical eye. I think that it's in danger of losing that original thread really, really badly. Like it's really in danger of it because it's morphed so far away. And I think you can justify that and rationalize it and say, well, you know, it's net, it's, it, this is where it is and this is what, but you know, when does a, a horse drawn buggy, like, it, you know, we don't call cars horse drawn buggies anymore. <laughs> right. So they have horsepower, but at a certain point, they became an automobile, not a buggy. You know, like that we don't, at a certain point, it was not the same concept anymore. We had to name it something different. So I still think there is yoga being taught out there um, for sure. But I think that it's getting lost. And part of that is um, you mentioned bringing all of those topics together, which is something that I always aim to do, too, because... Uh, I am oftentimes known as like this, this anatomy person. And I'm like, yeah, but I only know anatomy and I only know biomechanics so that I can teach asana in a more productive way that's less injurious. I don't know that because I want to be a doctor. I don't know that because I want to be a physical therapist. If I wanted to be those things, I would go be those things. I'm a yoga teacher. And because I teach a physical practice at this point, I need to understand those topics, but not fix people just to deal with them in what they're working on that day in a better and more effective way. And that's something that I understand because I was taught and have continually looked at the history of this and where it came from. The, you know, the sutras you mentioned are so often used these days as like the only text, mm -hmm. but then they're not there. There's no historical framing that, that people are given. Um, right in the sense that the sutras are actually saying the body is a problem. <laughs> we, need to, we need to transcend it. Like right. they're trying to get off the hamster wheel and like go out into those like places in the ether of meditation and not be here anymore. They're trying to like not participate in this manifest world. That's the whole point of the sutras. And then it's not mentioned that that, Change, that that there is tantra and mahatma and buddhism that shifted yeah. that perspective and said no let's be here now let's let's participate now with wisdom let's refine our understanding of sensation of, of pleasure and of, of pain and of our our difficulty with accepting things as they are and let's work with more ease in this world but let's let's you know, live our lifespan and, and when it's over, it's over, but let's not try to transcend it today. Um, and the sutras, you know, were, were taken and then asana, this is like three sutra uh, topic was like blown out into this epic proportion. And really recently, to be honest, like that's a Krishnamacharya age thing where this physical practice um, has become a huge uh, portion of, of events and it oftentimes not transcended in any way or moved past in any way um, and focused solely on. And I think that, you know, without looking at the fact that it was this physical practice of say Ashtanga, even we can go there and mm -hmm. say it's that um, paired with the sutras, which, you know, you've got to have a framework for that and say, well, you know, the sutras weren't really talking about Ashtanga and that kind of physicality. They were talking about learning to sit and meditate. That was it. Um, and so we've kind of added this, this component. Um, and it's knowing that lineage and knowing and understanding those threads from the past and how we ended up here that I think is vital to continuing um, forward in a, in a useful way and in a, in a wise way that, that 
doesn't lose its essence um, of the original teachings because otherwise it's, it's you know, what, what is it really then? Uh, I think it's so important to know how we got here and to continually look at like what shifted, why are we here in this like group class setting at this point? Not that it's wrong, but it's, it's where we are, but why? Why did that happen? Um, what was the original intention and when, when does it go so far off course that it's no longer considered a yoga practice um, and, or it's no longer considered asana? I think terminology is huge. Uh, understanding those words is huge. So in saying that, what do you think, again, it just, it goes back to this whole idea of how do we begin to go back to that. I mean, is that even something that's possible? Like, I have no idea, no. you know, that's, that's sort of the thing, yeah. like, right. So maybe another question for you, and I'm, I'm interested in getting your, your take on this. What's the difference between a yoga teacher then and a yoga instructor? Is there a difference? And if there is, which are you? So if you, you know, to answer the first part, can we go back? No, that's, that would be to negate, you know, my way of seeing things and my understanding of yoga. And I'm sure you would agree. We can't go backwards. There's no way. Um, we have to, we have to work with what we have right now. So that just means we can refine it. And is it going to look like what it did? No, of course not, because it morphs, but we, we need to have it morph in a way that's productive. Mm -hmm. So I think that, saying, um, you know, can we go back? No. Can we go forward? Of course, that's the only place to go. Um, can we worry about how it unfolds? No. All we can do is do our best at any given moment and to be really honest with what we're offering our students, what we're doing ourselves, and, and to make sure that it's as congruent as it can possibly be. So um, I think by doing that, then then it becomes, if you look at, you know, and any given day, I have to look at what it is I'm teaching, what it is I'm offering students, and do I still believe in that? And is that, is that as closely tied to what I, I understand from the teachings at this given moment? Or is it something I'm doing to be complacent or to uh, be popular or any of those things? And if, it's, if the answer is any of those, it's out the window in, mm. in my world these days just because I can't, I can't help the scenario if I don't do my best with being really honest about what I know. So um, I think that that's all anyone can do. And I like the term yoga teacher because my aim is to really teach and, and or educator because that's, that's my job is like really I'm a, a teacher of this practice and an and educator of what it is. It, it has qualities, a, a practice, a, a yoga itself, it, asana, all of those concepts, they have qualities that is the nature of this universe in order to participate in it things have qualities they have to like they have definitions otherwise they don't exist here that's how it works so I think um, you know it does need a little bit of framing is it many different spokes to the center of the wheel yeah of course but sometimes it's not a spoke sometimes it's like a totally different topic and I think refining our understanding of that is helpful um, what the difference to me is, is I think that there's, you know, if I had to think of what an instructor means to me, that's more of like, let me give you an experience um, or, or let me just name the poses and like hope you get into them. And usually it's about creating like an experience mm -hmm. with that. It's not about teaching people how or why or getting them to really tune in and question what they're doing and, and just, you know, really study themselves and study what's being offered and why they're doing what they're doing and to be really present and to move with intention in that moment. I think oftentimes of an instructor as like this experience creator where, you know, it, 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 they're almost conducting and <laughs> this is my best way to do it. I always want to make, exactly like I joke about it all the time, but I want to make a YouTube little video of a room, like a huge, like the Main Street Yoga Works room. Okay. I can hold like 100 people. And I want to have like three students in it and I want the teacher to like have the music going and then to be walking around the room, like not looking at those three students, but just looking, like, at the walls and the ceiling and like with their arms up, you know, like just really feeling it and just 
creating this experience and have those three students kind of like looking around like what's going on here uh, with their legs and arms like everywhere not knowing what they're doing because that's that's what I think of as an instructor so he's not like tuned in to what's happening they're more about and, and offering the students what's needed they're more about like creating this experience <laughs> so it's kind of a funny way to put it and it doesn't I don't mean it to be like critical but it's just it, 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 it's funny because it's true yeah like, I'm like I've been to that class I think <laughs> several times I've been to that class too where I'm like um are you look- there's a guy next to me that I'm fairly certain his leg might fall off at any given moment but have you seen this <laughs> <laughs> oh oh. and I you know it's not even a criticism of that teacher to be honest it's not it's a criticism of the system and it, right and it's not you know oftentimes it's not their fault they're teaching like that that's what they know that's what you know that's catch up to them that's what they know to do that's what the experience has been to them they don't they don't know how one of the things in mentorship that I go to is because they watch a lot of videos and a lot of the videos all of the mentor uh, people that I've worked with will laugh if they're listening to this because the thing I say to them is okay you've got like you know I always name people just like arbitrary names I'm like Gary is in the back like dying He's like dying with every single pose you offer. He's dying and you just walk past him and kind of look at him like, well, there's Gary again, totally not doing what I'm asking, but I have no idea how to help him. So I'm just going to go over here and just keep going. <laughs> and they, and then there's like the really flexible person and you're like, you know, pushing on them deeper and they're like dying in their own capacity, but they don't know it. And, right. Um, and so it's like kind of this, this, thing where if you don't know that's all you do and how do you fix it if you don't have the tools how do you do better if you don't have the tools we can't so that's why it's not anyone you know any individual's fault at a certain point it's the system at large isn't offering proper education for people and proper length of education and and mentorship and one-on-one assistance and all of that kind of thing is just not being offered as largely as it needs to and by really experienced teachers that you know know what they're talking about and that are willing to be like honest about what they know like if you want to learn how to chant I am not your person if you want to learn how to uh you know if you want to talk about Hindu deities I was joking with Coral Brown last night I'm like I'm not your jam I'm not gonna I don't know I'm like yeah Hanuman's the monkey guy like and I know some about it but I can't teach that as a topic I'm a student of that part so um I think you know it's really being honest with that kind of thing but um i i think that that's like a start a you know this is what's happening let's do better um yeah no I'm that's picturing that class anymore. i know i know i just i can't get that thought out of my mind i'm like wow that's <laughs> happening every day i want to ask you about what you're doing in your life currently uh to maintain balance in your life what you're doing in your life to maintain balance and what sort of fun things you're working on currently. You got it. Um, So for a while, I've kind of been going back and forth between LA and Columbus, Ohio. Um, This is where my boyfriend lives. He has kids here, as I mentioned, and I've been keeping my place in LA and um, starting in the new year, I'm going to actually just move here um, and be here. There's just a, a bunch of kind of opportunities and I'll still go back to LA on a regular basis and still participate there. But, um, I, I just, that's the balance part. It was getting really difficult to kind of do the amount of travel that I do and to also, you know, sometimes be bouncing from one side of the country to the other, um, and have half my stuff in one place and half in another. So there's, there's that. Um, I also, because I travel almost every weekend, uh, teaching workshops and that sort of thing, I, usually sit in my sweatpants in the middle of the week and do, you know, very little um, in terms of like going out and, and working outside of my house. I'm on the computer doing all that kind of stuff, but I'm pretty like self-indulgent in the, I'm going to not um, stress myself uh, with like a whole bunch of classes and clients midweek at this point. I have, you know, a couple classes that I'm teaching and that's about it. Um, because I used to travel every weekend and teach five days a week of full classes and uh, private clientele as well. And I was just burning at both ends. Um, And I have a lot of online stuff that I'm really excited about. And 
I can't do that and offer that if I'm doing those other things. So one of my, you know, issues that was coming up was that I was traveling and teaching teacher trainings on the road and then teaching workshops on the road. And I would see students like once a year or I'd see them for the training and then that would be it. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was actually adding to the problem by doing that because if I come only once um, and teach you a 200 hour and then I leave and I don't come back to do continuing education or I don't offer you solutions um, and places to go uh, in the interim, then what you'll do is reference back to either a manual that may be like outdated in some way or to what's around you, you know, which will be oftentimes, you know, the teachers that exist in your studio space or whatever that may have a different way of looking at things or, or, or may not be any further educated than you are at that point. So I was coming back and they'd have all these like, hold your shoulders away from your ears. And I'd be like, see, we talk why is that why <laughs> they're like oh we forgot and everybody says it and I'm like ah so <laughs> so one of the things that and I was like I'm adding to it because like I'm coming I'm teaching them a couple things and I'm leaving and then you're leaving the going back right yeah and it's not helping so um one of the one of the um things that I've been working on is going places more consistently and then doing online uh, mentorship options. And I've got a pretty cool um, online concept that's coming soon uh, for continuing ed so that people have a place to reference back to. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, follow-up calls and uh, group calls with groups that I've worked with um, in a mentorship setting, I answer a ton of emails and a ton of uh, texts and that sort of thing about like, what do I do here? How do I keep going forward? Like supporting the people that I work with so that they are getting that backing from someone and they have a place to go. And if I don't know the answer, I, I usually send them to somebody that I know is an expert in that field or that, that um, topic. So I'm trying to do that sort of thing. And then, the part I'm really excited about is there's a studio here in Columbus that I'm working with called the Art of Yoga, and it's actually a nonprofit studio, which is really cool. Um, and I am teaching a class for their teachers um, that's free on Wednesday mornings, so that I can provide for them some of that follow-up um, education, and then honestly to give them a chance to practice in a different way than is you know readily available out there at large and and just to be a part of the community and offer what I have um to them and support them because a number of them have done the mentorship stuff with me and continue to and then I am really excited because I'm doing uh I I had decided I wasn't going to do 200 hour trainings anymore I wasn't going to offer them at all um I just felt like there was enough 200 hour teachers out there in a certain capacity. And I just couldn't really bring myself to leave all the teachers that I've worked with before, or all the teachers that need help with continuing education. I felt like I had to serve them in a better way. I, I can't like just go and, and sell more of these trainings to people who, and leave all these people that need help um, mm -hmm. without. So um, I actually partnered side by side with Yoga Works um, rather than under them, and uh, and I'm doing a 200 hour training here at the Art of Yoga. But rather than, and it is available, and I have students in it that are new um, to teaching, and that's awesome. But I wanted to set a precedent, and I wanted to be able to offer something where you know I was doing. I, I'm sure you've done them as well, um, intensive formats where mm -hmm. you fly seven times to yep. a certain place. And that's not conducive to people coming in from other places to participate. You can't fly in seven times somewhere unless you're the teacher. Like, it's just not, it's not financially possible. It's really difficult. So, um, and I know there's a lot of training programs in like pretty fancy places out there, but I was like, you know what? I want to be able to offer this in a, an affordable and economical way for people. And so the studio here was a great opportunity. And, you know, who wants to go to Columbus, Ohio in February? Well, not that many people. Um, so the plane tickets are pretty cheap. And, and so I'm partnering side by side with them to do this intensive format, which is two chunks divided up into two chunks. It's two, two week modules um and 
yeah, at the end, there is a 200 hour yoga work certificate that you can get and um, register that with Yoga Alliance if you choose. But what my aim was, was to actually say that 200 hour number doesn't matter. Um, and to be able to provide 200 hours worth of continuing education, be it to a student or to teachers who already have trainings and to say, like, listen, yeah, sure, go get a 200 hour, go get a 500 hour at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. So why not do some repetition with somebody that you understand? Mm -hmm. Because that's what I did is I understood James. I understood his way of speaking. So I could understand the topic over time. It took a long time to understand, you know, a lot of it. I'm still learning all the time, yeah. but he resonated with me. And so I know there are students that resonate with me and they want it. I want to be able to provide them a continuing education opportunity that maybe doesn't look like the classic model, but is going to help them do continuing education. And then, you know, I, it's heartbreaking to me to go places. And I'm sure you've seen this too, where, They've paid for a training or paid for two or three sometimes uh -huh. and still don't know anything and they're frustrated yeah. and they don't have any money left. And yeah. it's one of those where I'm like, okay, what can I do? So that the training I'm doing here is mostly aimed at people who already have their 200 hour certificate. Um, if it's the yoga Alliance certificate that they have, if it's like registered training through yoga Alliance, they don't have to have registered, but it just has to qualify. They get the training for half off. So they can come and take a, a 200 hour training for like half the price, which is, um, you know, 1750 for four weeks worth of education wow. is pretty good in my yeah. opinion. And then in addition, um, I wanted to be able to, to populate it with a huge amount of teachers who had already gone through training so that, that the new teachers um, would culturally have a precedent set for them where they understand that this is going to be a long-term commitment. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with me, but you have to have some sort of teacher-student relationship that helps you uh, learn in depth long-term. And so uh, I wanted them to kind of know like, hey, there's all these people here that have already done this and they're doing it again. Um, and I get that that's what I'm gonna have to do too. So there's people flying in from all over the place um, to do it. Some have done it with me before. Some are people that have just done workshops and they're coming to do this. And I'm really, really excited about it because it's, it, I mean, I present a lot of this in a, a little bit of a different way than I have in the past. Um, and it's really aimed at all the why is behind everything. You can go out and really teach the population of students that you're working with in your community. Um, in an effective way. So I'm so excited about that part. Um, oh my God, that it sounds feels so amazing. Like I'm, I'm helping. Yeah. <laughs> if rather than, rather than adding more, more, uh, mix to the, to the stew. <laughs> <laughs> instead of adding more to the mix well i'm just gonna ask you uh a couple final questions and then i okay. will uh, i will let you go but um one of the things that i always like asking uh my guest is uh to talk about something either what do you radically love or w what in your life has radically transformed you Oh, let me think. I, I mean, I can honestly say that I know it, it sounds like a trite thing to say, especially because it's like the, the curated thing yoga teachers are supposed to say. Right. But I, I really love this topic. I really love it with a depth of, of um, love that, it keeps me coming back over and over and over again. And if that ever stops, I won't do it anymore. Um, but from where I sit right now, this is like how I see the world. And I, I find that it has been the most therapeutic um, thing for me in my life. And it has given me the ability to live with a lot more ease, even in really, really challenging times, like, and to honestly live with that, that doesn't mean that I'm like perfect. I swear like a sailor. I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I have my own life struggles. Like I'm a human being that is just living, uh, trying to live in a more aware way. But I can say that I really do love this 
topic, and I really do love teaching um, in in such a huge way. I, I think it's it's part of who I am as a human being. Um, it's just kind of what I came set up with. So uh, I really do love it, and I can say that being able to live via this you know set of teachings has has made my life work a lot better it's still like a life of chaos like anybody but I just see it a little bit more clearly and I'm able to cope with it in a way way gentler um, way and so I can say like that is something that I'm incredibly driven by um, and and in love with I I just really do think that for a a, a segment of people this is a way that you can see the world and live with more ease Uh, there are other ways out there but for me this is kind of the one Mm -hmm. Alex you're amazing thank you so much (laughs) no thank you so my pleasure I mean you're like I'm so grateful to have and to be in a community with a, a great teacher like yourself that's out there and really practicing and really taking yoga into action. I mean, in my perspective, that's what we all need to be doing. We all need to be asking those mm-hmm. questions and we all need to be proactive in in how we bring our our interpretation of these teachings into the world in a way that's mm-hmm. sustainable for for people and in a way that's authentic not only to us, but to our students and to the world, you know, it's, it's, I totally admire what you do. And I'm so inspired by everything that you're doing and by your honesty. So thank you so much for being who you are, number one. And, (laughs) and, uh, they haven't given me any other options. (laughs) And thank you so much for coming on to the show. I'm so grateful for you. Do you, so where can we find more information? Do you want to just tell us quickly? Yeah, sure. Um, so you can go to my website, uh, yogaphysics.com, um, and all of the uh, upcoming workshops and trainings and everything um, are up there. The There's a few months left before the, the one in Columbus starts. So if you're interested in that, just find me. Um, I emailed Alexandria at Yoga Physics. Um, Dot com And I've been taking emails and phone calls with everybody that wants to sign up for the training because I want to be able to speak to them and to answer their questions and give them an outline, make sure it works for them and fits with what they're um, wanting and, and thinking uh, is their kind of way. So those are the places to find me. And I would say thank you to you. You're rad chick, and I totally remember <laughs> what you're doing there as well. So I appreciate you having me on doing this. Oh, no, that's so great. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're welcome. (laughs) So be sure to check out the show notes for the show. You can get them on the website and they'll be posted along. If you're listening to this on iTunes, the show notes will be there. So you can find Alex's links on there uh, or via her website. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. For more information, visit www.radicallylove.com forward slash podcast to read all about today's guests or past guests. You can click on any of the links or for more information, you can always follow me on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Uh, 